Hey everybody, welcome to Round the Twist, episode 227. It is November 4th, 2015, and I'm about 1.30 uh, in the afternoon, and I'm just getting my second cup of coffee. So, caramel apple from San Marco today. One more drink, I'm sorry. So, it's been a week, uh, not quite a week actually, since it's I'm recording on Wednesday because like I said last week I traded a day with a co-worker. Um, <laughs> it's been a busy and very full week, but we'll get to that in various and sundry. It's a knitting show, so let's hop right in with what I'm knitting. First things first, what's on my needles, the New Leaf socks, yes plural, socks. I had that moment of hesitation last week where I had looked at the first sock, this one, and since I'm not knitting these for me, I'm having to go off measurements given to me by Amy, Froggy Monkey, uh, and these looked awfully long for me, and they actually fit me, but I did... Uh, well, let me give you the specs first. I'm knitting them out of Gail's Art. Uh, lovely Gail from Gail's Art. And her website is gailsart.com. And this is her special secret sock blank, which is a 7525 superwash merino and nylon blend in the new leaf colorway. This is what's left of the sock blank currently. Looks like this. Eh, it's not quite half. I had decided before that blue stripe right here was about where the halfway point was, so not bad. Uh, oh, poop. Ugh, sorry. So I had my friend Sarah came to visit. She got here yesterday and pretty much not quite straight off the plane, but once she got in the house, I don't think she was here half an hour, and I took this sock and threw it out here and said, here, try this on. I need to make sure this fits. And she says it fits her. She wears a like seven, seven and a half, and Amy told me she wears like an eight, eight and a half. So if Sarah says it fits her, it should be okay for Amy. Maybe I just like my socks a little snugger, a little more snug, snugger, more snug. I don't know. I'm sure, Mom. I'm sure you'll weigh in on what's correct. My English teacher mother. Uh, so first sock I'm leaving done. I'm going to make the second sock exactly the same, knitting it up on US 1's 2.25 millimeter needles. And oh, let me pull this through so you can see it a little better. I did start the second sock. I finished the ribbing. I decided I could at least, even if I would have had to rip back this first sock, I could at least get the second sock started. Um, and then know how much I had to take off of this one, make that one that much shorter, and then rip back this one. Don't have to rip back, so I'm good to go. I got through my 26 rows of ribbing. Oh, why? Why? And I've started onto the plain stockinette of the leg. I'm about an inch in. Yeah, about an inch. Uh, and it's been this lovely, like, rusty gold brown, very fall colors. But I'm about ready to get into that, like I said, that blue stripe, and then we'll work our way down. And hopefully. I get a good chunk of this leaf portion in before the sock ends, which I think I'll be okay. So I'll get that stuffed back in here. And that's kind of been my mindless knitting project this week. Um, I just I wanted to get something done and going so if I did have to rip back, I could hopefully, and what part of my brain thought this, especially with the work coming, with work, my work schedule the way it is this weekend while well, my friend Sarah is here. I still had it in my head, oh, I could get a good chunk of this done and uh, get down the foot so I can see how much more shorter I have to make it. And there's no way. I don't know where my brain was, but it was gone. So I made progress on the second sock. I don't have to shorten the first sock, so yay! It doesn't matter what my brain was thinking because that's out of the way. Second thing that I'm knitting on is the Slippery Slope Socks. It's by a pattern by Melia Bella, Melissa from the His and Hers podcast, which she and her husband, Sean, Viper something, 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 I want to say 259, I think he's on Ravelry. Anyway, 
Melissa and her husband, Sean, have the His and Hers podcast, and they just recorded, they're doing a season two because they had such a long break, which is honestly probably what I should have done after my almost year-long hiatus when the twins were born. Uh, but, meh. Uh, but they just recorded their first episode of their season two, so uh, go over and give that a watch if you've missed them, which I haven't even had a chance to do that, but... The sock pattern is Slippery Slope by <laughs> Melissa, and it's available through a kit being offered by Casey from Tangerine Designs. All that information is over on the Tangerine Designs Ravelry group. There's two patterns being offered, this one from Melissa, and then a hat pattern by Susan B. Anderson. So I was one of the test knitters. I'm a pathetic test knitter. I at least got the pattern part of the sock done. <laughs> uh, but I pulled out some of my stash, and it is, this is Socks That Rock Lightweight in the Superhero Blues colorway, which was a, a, a color from the Rock and Sock Club last year. And it's got beautiful, like a navy blue and a lighter periwinkle blue and a gorgeous, gorgeous, almost like amethyst purple in it. And I love it, but my friend Sarah, who's here visiting, she also loves blues and purples. Purple's her favorite color, so I think these are going to be her Christmas present. And she likes shorter cuffs, so I'm about one, two, three, I'm about four and a half inches, and she about likes four inch cuffs. So I'm ready to start the heel flap, and I'll be honest, I only did like two repeats on this, so it's pretty pathetic. I did maybe like a quarter of an inch on this sock this week, but I was so engrossed in getting uh, the new leaf socks, second sock going, that I just, I didn't pull this out. And then we had so much company in the house that I couldn't pull it out. And there was so much to do. We were going places and doing this and doing that. And then head exploded. Didn't have time to knit. Uh, I was the driver in the cars for a while. I'm sorry if you hear dogs barking. The hubby's coming home. <laughs> Uh, the one thing I did get a lot of time to do, in fact, I didn't even touch Gabe's flax sweater this week to pick up stitches for the first sleeve. I didn't, just didn't happen. Maybe tonight, because I know hubby wants to uh, play some of his video game tonight, so maybe he'll get into some lovely battle sequences that have the faster paced music and I can zip down one of the arms of Gabe's sweater. So moving on, that's all I have for On the Needles. Uh, next is Pokey Things, and this is, I think, where I spent most of my crafting time this week. Uh, pretty much every day that hubby's been at work that I've been home, uh, which was Monday and yesterday, uh, whenever the twins went down for naps, I came down here, ate my lunch, and then I pulled out my cross stitch. So I got a lot done on the Very Merry Christmas Town, and let me pull this the needle up and out of the way for you. So I got quite a bit done on this this week actually. Uh, I finished, I did and finished all the gold around the sign and the gold down in the shop window on all the little candy jars. I got Mrs. Claus's headband done. Let's see what else. I, I don't think I'd done the white, the, fro the frosting bit of the gingerbread area under here under the sign. I got that all done. And all but the top row of the blue that's the background color for the sign is done. So I feel like I did a lot. <laughs> and I'm getting close to being done with this clue two. Like I said last week, clue four is out already, which was the final clue. So <sighs> whatever. I'm going at my own pace and I'm getting it done and I'm enjoying myself. So that's even better. This is available. I think they have it in kit form even from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, which the kit was beautifully put together and done. Uh, I'm really liking it. Even the gold, the Krennic, uh, I think it's Krennic, 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 I think is how you pronounce it. I do like it better, a lot better than the DMC floss, gold metallic floss. I didn't realize how noisy it was though. When I was stitching this whole thing, it's like every time you pull the thread through the hole in the fabric, it's almost like a <laughs> like a, a, a grating noise. 
and I didn't realize how bad it was until I switched back to, and I think I did some of the, um, some of the hand dyed floss for the headband on Mrs. Claus. And that just glided through the fabric like silk and it was silent. And there was no noise with it and it was just, it was like a whisper going past. And it, it was so nice to have that I was like, wow, I didn't realize how much the, the metallic, even this nicer metallic was grating on my nerves. It's not enough to make me want to throw the entire project across the room when I'm working with it. Um, but by the time I finished all of that gold around the side and the gold down in the shop windows, I was just, I was done. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to say that I'm hopeful to have this done for the next show. I'm not even going to say that. So, uh, that's it for pokey things. Let's move on to various and sundry. The, I have one thing to show you and then a bit of talking. So, like I said, my friend Sarah. Dear, dear friend, we've been friends for, let's see, we started rooming together in 2000, so 15 years. Oh, 15 years. Oh my gosh. Her youngest sister, Christina, was like five, four or five, when we moved into our dorm room together, and I just remember her sitting in one of the closets so she was out of the way and not underfoot, and I gave her my disc man. That's how old this is, my disc man to listen to one of the VeggieTales soundtracks and just hearing this little, little girl voice going, VeggieTales, VeggieTales, from behind our refrigerator <laughs> in the closet. And now she's student teaching, so that makes it even more hilarious. And she's turned into such a wonderful, wonderful person. But Sarah and I have been friends for so long. She last month went over to Denmark to visit some family she has over there and, um, she came out into the kitchen when we got back from running errands this morning. I was like, okay, so I was going to save this for your birthday because you're hard to shop for, but I'm going to give it to you now. So I decided to show everybody now. Uh, evidently, she the only I'm the only person she brought back a tangible present for from Denmark. Everyone else got chocolates or um, like foodstuffs, edible things. So she went to the Queen's Market. Uh, which is outside one of the palaces, I'm not sure which one, uh, and went around and saw this, as she put it, an old farmer sitting there, uh, I guess elderly enough that he didn't really speak any English, so she was having a friend of hers translate, and she said he had this huge, a couple of huge like laundry baskets full of yarn, <laughs> and she knew she had to get me some. So she hands me this beautiful skein. There's no tag, because this is... Um, hand spun. I don't know if it's spun by the farmer or someone in his family and it is what she got out of the exchange that was being translated is it is mainly from his small flock of sheep which I believe are Gotland sheep which I kind of identified from uh, the color and the guard hairs by some Gotland fiber that Sandykins brought me a few years ago but there is a small amount of merino from the Falklands blended and so he wasn't able to list it as organic yarn because he couldn't prove that the merino sheep from the Falkland Islands were organically raised but I have some an unidentified amount of unidentified weight I'd say it's a sport weight two ply hand spun yarn that I need to do something fabulous with so it's a beautiful, beautiful, heathered, kind of medium gray. And I'm very excited to figure out something to knit with it, because that is such a nice present, and she knows me so, so well. Uh, yay. Uh, okay, housekeeping stuff. Since I am recording a day early, because of the schedule change, and because I'm working six of the next seven days, Sunday is pretty much going to be a throwaway day for me. I'm just going to be in recovery, rest and recovery mode. I don't even know if I'll knit or craft or anything. Uh, and then I'll have to work next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm going to say right now, I'm not going to record next week. I'm very sorry. Um, if I had that spare day, maybe I would have, but because of trading days, I 
one day to craft is not I don't want to put that added pressure on me and be panicked and not be able to um, relax and have that recovery day for me I have I love you all dearly but I have to take care of me first if you want the show to continue on so that's what we're gonna have to do I'm skipping next week I will see you all in two weeks which let me let me look hang on calendar calendar come on calendar ah I'm not fast enough to pull this up so two weeks from tomorrow I will see you all November 19th because yeah next Thursday I will have just come off of three more work days and I can't craft at work so I'm sorry two weeks I will see everyone till then until then drink lots of coffee and happy knitting bye